Sterling O'Keefe, Brewers of OV, the Carlsberg family, and Miller High Life. Carling O'Keefe Sports, your box seat to the CFL. Featuring Friday Night Football at its best, a full interlocking schedule of exciting matchups with new powerhouses and renewed rivalries. It's wide open football CFL style. Catch all the action from your home box seat. Carling O'Keefe Sports, bringing the sports world home to you. Well, let's say hello to everybody across Canada. Welcome to beautiful BC Place in Vancouver, British Columbia. A crowd of some 36 to 37,000 enjoying the activity so far. We've got two minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the first half. The Lions are out in front of the Calgary Stampeders 18 to 7. As a matter of fact, it was just moments ago that the Stampeders finally got on the board. Jerry Dottilio had started at quarterback, was ineffective. The rookie, Bernard Quarles, was the one who engineered the touchdown drive. First down, Lions from their 36-yard line. This is Roy DeWalt. And DeWalt has absolutely no place to go. Danny Bass finally forced him out at the line of scrimmage. The Lions have been very impressive defensively. They made a number of key interceptions. And both of their touchdowns were as a result of passes. Roy DeWalt to Sammy Green. Bill. And here's the fellow that scored the big touchdown for Calgary, Willie Armstead. Willie, are you having a little trouble hanging onto the ball? Well, it's a little humid over here. Uh, it's a little wet, but we, uh, we, 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 we adjusted to it. Now, the offense has got problems getting going in the early part of the game for Calgary. What's been the trouble? Well, the trouble, we just haven't been doing the things we do best. I mean, we just look back to the fundamentals of pitching and catching and read the defenses. So we just got to buckle down and go, go with it. The old pass is caught by Mervyn Fernandez. And Fernandez is having a great afternoon as he carries... Ron Hopkins on his back into the 53-yard line. A pickup of 22 yards. Roy DeWalt to Mervyn Fernandez. And this afternoon, Fernandez has caught four for 58. So successfully in front of Terry Irvin. Makes the catch. And a little fancy running after he gets the football. The BC Lions once again. There's two minutes and ten seconds. Lots of time for them to take it downfield and add to their 18-7 lead. DeWalt's pass. Bounces out of the arms of Ned Armour. They rule it an incomplete pass. He was hit the moment that he received it. Ray Odoms was there to make the hit. There you see the blade coming up and laying the lumber on Ned Armour. Crops the football up. But for those of you who just joined us, let's take you through the scoring. Early in the first quarter, toss in a Louis Pasaglia field goal, a single, and then another 20-yard touchdown catch by Sammy Green, 18-0. Calgary Stan Peters finally come back with that touchdown reception to Willie Armstrong for 18-7. The Waltz pass is complete for the first down into the 36-yard line. The catch made by John Pankratz. Ray Odoms makes the stop, but the gain is 17 yards, and Pankratz, who had 18 catches coming into this ball game, now registers his fourth of the afternoon. Well, he's turned into an instant star for the BC Lions this season, getting a chance to be a regular in that offensive lineup. The second time they've worked that pattern, three things out, a natural seam created for John Pankratz, and he makes the catch. A minute 45 left to go in the half. First down, Lions. The pass over the head of Pankratz, who incidentally is a pretty intelligent young kid. He was a Rhodes Scholar candidate coming out of university. Elected instead to play football, and one of the very first things that Coach Don Matthews said when he accepted the job of the BC Lions, he said, my number one quarterback will be Roy DeWalt, and John Pankratz will be a starter for me as an inside receiver. And he sure hasn't let Don Matthews down at all. Call number 20 was coming in on a safety. Boy, these defensive backs, the Stampeders having a tough day. Ron Hopkins with the sore knee, and now apparently an injury to Richie Hall. Richie Hall only stands five foot six. They tell me that he hits like a six footer, but it really is a disadvantage. As a matter of fact, Sammy Green's first touchdown was caught over his head because of the height differential. Six one for Sammy Green, five six for Richie Hall. Incidentally, Roy DeWalt has completed 15 of 21 passes this afternoon with four different receivers, but the two big passes went to Sammy Green for major scores. You know, gentlemen, in this magnificent BC Play Stadium, an interesting point when we were here yesterday afternoon, 
you could see without any lights on. In other words, the roof, the ceiling itself, lets in all, for sufficient light that you can read a newspaper or whatever you want to do. The lights are on now for the game, but it's not absolutely necessary because you have such a light ceiling, and it just makes for a, a, a great stadium, and I think without question, and you two will agree, the finest stadium there is in North America today. You see, Bill, from that shot there, the lights are all strapped to the ceiling of the stadium, and sometimes, though, as a receiver, you can lose the ball up in those lights. Flags are down as the wall was just drilled. James West was in there. The Stampeders may have jumped. I guess, Leaf, it depends upon who the receiver is. Uh, Tom Frisani was saying it didn't bother him a bit. Well, maybe I was thinking if I was playing, because I had a walk <laughs> Now, I wasn't inferring that. You know that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, though, about this stadium. It really is a paradox. This is a beautiful day in Vancouver. Last year, a beautiful day like this would have meant an extra five or 6,000 fans for the Lions. Today, because it's so nice and because of the tremendously beautiful setting here in Vancouver, a lot of people have opted not to come to the ball game. Well, you, you know that there are 150,000 people, I was just told, at a sandcastle competition at White Rock, which is about 30, 40 miles south of Vancouver. And they tell me that English Bay and all the beaches are just absolutely jammed because they haven't had too much hot weather. But when you get the warm weather in Vancouver, it is paradise. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We were out on the water yesterday with our pal Frank Rigney, who's with us in the booth today. And it was truly one of the, well, one of the great days of my life. It couldn't have been nicer. Riggs was, as usual, great host. And so is his wife, Donna. We sure appreciated it. Hopkins takes the putt and with a good little deep fumbles the ball out of bounds at about the 23-yard line so the Stampeders will maintain possession. A 35-yard boot has returned 13 yards and so with a minute of 12 left to play in the second quarter, the Stampeders will have an opportunity to add to the seven points that they already have. Let's have a look and see if we can pick up that fumble there. Richie Hopkins up the sidelines. The ball squirts loose, but... Number 89, Doug MacArthur, Mike MacArthur gets on the ball there, and of course, Stan Peters retained possession. So let's see if Bernard Quarles can do what he did the last drive for the Stan Peters, and that is get them into the end zone. He's got a great arm. He floats this one up beautifully for Levenseller. And Levenseller is inside the 40 to about the 38. Nelson Martin, the Seneca College grad in Toronto, was there to make the stop, 47 yards to pick up. What a great throw by Bernard Quarles, steps up in the pocket, and I really like the delivery he gives here. Mike Levins there working free in behind number 17, Kerry Parker comes up for the catch, and boy, the Stamp Peters have really come back here late in the second quarter, their last possession, a touchdown, and now Bernard Quarles has got them into BC Lions territory again. The clock is moving with 52 seconds left to play on the half. Quarles is four for four since coming in in relief of Jerry Dottilio. Daryl Smith is over his head. So we've got 41 seconds left to play in this first half. It is BC 18, Calgary 7. The Lions jumped out to an 18-0 lead. Calgary finally got moving thanks to that young man, Bernard Quarles from the University of Hawaii. Well, that's a lot of yardage. You saw 110 yards on the four completions that he has had, so you can see he can move this football team in a hurry. He'd like to move them for at least a first down right here. Let's see if he can. Looking for Rob Forbes, and it's over his head. Nelson Martin on the coverage for the Lions. Quarles was under tremendous pressure, was able to get away from the pressure, and floated the ball down to Forbes, but just over his head. So that'll bring J.T. Hay out onto the field. See if he can narrow the BC lead to eight points. I have to tell you, this is really a thrill being in BC Place. It's, it's just a magnificent structure. If you ever have an opportunity of coming out to Vancouver, you must make it a point to drop in and see this facility. And most of you weren't with us at the top, but we can tell you that head coach Don Matthews says it really does a lot for his ball club. They feel they've made it to the bigs when they walk in here. The field goal by J.T. Hay is good from 45 yards out. And so with 27 seconds left to play in the first half, it is B.C. 18, 
Calgary 10, and we've got a ball game. All right, I like that field goal by J.T. Hay. That's a long kick, and he's got them right back in the game, 18 to 10. And as we suggested, Bernard Quarles is really coming through for the ball club. Coming in in the second quarter, he's done a good job, got them 10 points, and right back in the thick of things. If you missed the score from Montreal earlier this afternoon, it was Winnipeg 30, Montreal 25, a moral victory if not one in the one and loss column for the Concord because they trailed badly at the start. But they came back to make it a ball game. John Henry White. And he gets out to about the 37 or 38 yard line as the Lions appear to run out of the squad. Rick Klassen leaving the field of play with that ice pack on his injured right ankle. That's a big loss for the BC Lion defense because that means they have to bring an extra linebacker to the game, Kevin Konar. And go with that three-man defensive line, which I'm sure they don't want to do. They get a much better pass rush with Klassen in there. Well, they had already lost their defensive tackle, James Curry, prior to the start of this ball game. Brent Reset went in to replace him, and now with Rick Klassen out of there, that means half of their starting front four out of the ball game. So we've got a timeout called by the Stampeders. It'll be second down, eight yards to go for the BC Lions from their 37-yard line. Clock is stopped with 21 seconds left to play in the half. We've had a couple of pass interceptions by Bernie Gleer and one by Tyrone Cruz for the Lions, and that was instrumental in giving them excellent field possession most of that first uh, part of the ball game. Jack Goda talking things over on the sidelines. <laughs> He's got to be a lot happier now than he was about six or seven minutes ago because it looked like it was a blowout coming. Well, some people have suggested that Jack Goda's job is on the line with the Stampeders. They haven't been pleased with the performance of the club so far this season, but in the second quarter now the offense getting on track a little bit, and they're back in the ballgame now. They win this ball game. They're tied for first. I don't know why anybody would be putting the heat on Jocko, but anyway, Bernie Morrison makes the stop. And it will force the BC Lions with 18 seconds left to play into a punting situation unless they elect to try to hang on to the ball, which, of course, they could do with 18 seconds left. Well, they can. The Stampeders only have that one time out, and when the referee signals the ball into play, they have 20 seconds to put that ball into play, and Roy DeWald, I'm sure, will just take the football, kneel down, and end the first half. The winner of this ball game will move into a tie with the Edmonton Eskimos and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on top of the Western Conference standings. And mentioning Edmonton, let's say congratulations to Dave Cutler, who has become the all-time leading scorer in all of professional football history. Nobody deserves it more. Nobody's been more consistent, and certainly nobody has contributed to the success of the Edmonton Eskimos any more than Dave Cutler. We certainly do offer our congratulations. Nice going, Dave. That's a great, great accomplishment. It'll be a while before anybody breaks it, I'll guarantee you that. Well, if anyone ever does break it, that's a very, very difficult mark first to attain and then to have someone come and break. I can't see it happening. So there's 12 seconds left on the time clock and only six seconds left on the game clock to the end of this second quarter. DeWalt will take the pass from center. Just go down and ground the ball. And the first half has come to an end with the BC Lions out in front of the Calgary Stampeders by a count of 18 to 10. I'll tell you that the proudest man in BC, probably in Canada, is Bobby Ackles, the general manager of the BC Lions, who are playing in that magnificent BC Place Stadium that you are looking at right now. Bobby Ackles and I worked together back in 1953 and 1954, and he is the only man that has been with the Lions ever since they came into operation in 54 in the Empire Stadium, which at that time people thought was a great stadium, and then to today, which is certainly the fruition of your career. And Bobby, the thing I want to ask you about is two or three years ago, this club was almost bankrupt. The question was, were you going to continue? Now, because a BC place, it seems to be all turned around. Well, it's not quite turned around yet, Bill, but uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, when we, uh, three years ago, before they announced the stadium, uh, and I have to give full credit to Premier Bill Bennett of this province for uh, building the stadium, 
uh, we were close to bankrupt, uh, and there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And of course, with uh, 60,000 seats here to, to fill, uh, there is uh, a probability now that the franchise can uh, go on for a long, long time to come. What do you anticipate for average crowds in BC Place? Oh, I think this year, if the, our team continues to play well, that we'll, uh, we'll average 45 to 50,000. You think you've got 38 or 39,000 here, but obviously the great weather outside has hurt you today. Well, that's the unfortunate thing about uh, nice days in Vancouver. The people will stay on the beach, but no, we'll we'll start filling the stadium as uh, our team progresses and starts uh, playing well, and uh, I'm sure we'll see a number of full houses this You've year. You've got a good, exciting ball club. Good luck, Bobby Thank you, Ackles. Bill. Bobby Ackles, general manager of the BC Lions. Now let's have a look at those first half statistics with Pat Marsden. Well, we can tell you that the BC Lions are out in front of the Calgary Stampeders 18 to 10, and we'll continue with halftime in just a moment. CJOH Television requires a mature, experienced account executive for the local sales office. Applicants should have a strong background in broadcast sales and a good working knowledge of the television industry. Please reply in writing to Post Office Box 5813, Station F, Ottawa, Ontario, K2C, 3G6. Attention, the local sales supervisor. All replies will be kept strictly confidential. CJOH and Bass Clef present Diana Ross at the Super X Grandstand Thursday, August 18th. Tickets now on sale. Weekends give you the chance to catch up on the activities in the world of sports. That's why you'll enjoy This Week in Football. I'm Peter Young. Join me this weekend on CTV. He turned down the Detroit Lions to play for Winnipeg in 1935 and quickly earned a place in Canadian football history. This All-American from North Dakota almost single-handedly won the Grey Cup that year, running back kicks for over 300 yards. We'll meet him today as Carling O'Keefe Sports presents Yesterday in the CFL. anything just to take a breather but you know you'd be giving too much to the other team but right from the first time you played you knew you had found your game and right from the first time you tried OB we'll bet you had found your beer that's why you just say OB for that great tasting beer OB OB oh yeah you just say OB Lionel Conacher was Canada's athlete of the half century, and rightly so, because he was so talented in so many sports. But if you had to pick one player in one sport, you'd have to pick the runner-up to Lionel Conacher. Now, this man was an outstanding football player. He made history in 1935 when he earned the name Twinkle Toes. He did it again in 1948, and he was called the Golden Ghost. Today, it's Fritzy Hansen. Fritzy Hansen was offered $125 a game in 1935 to play in Winnipeg, and he's never looked back. That year, his Blue Bomber team beat Hamilton 1812 as Hansen ran back kicks for 300 yards, including one 78-yard return for a touchdown. His career was interrupted by the war, but in 1947, he was in Calgary playing for the Stampeders. In 1948, he was on another Grey Cup winner there. He was quick and elusive, a natural leader who has left a permanent mark on the Canadian game. December the 7th has a special meaning to a lot of people, but I'm sure that December the 7th has a very significant meaning to you, Fitzy, something you'll never forget. Certainly does, John. That was the first time the West ever won the Great Cup, and I can recall seeing that beautiful stadium underneath the mountain in Hamilton, full of ice and mud, 7,000 people there at a buck apiece. 
Tell me about that football game, Fritzy. You scored one touchdown that went for 78 yards. You carried punt returns for something like 300 yards on a muddy, icy field. How could you have done all that? Uh, it, I don't know. The field just absolutely seemed made to order for, for me. It was just the right type of footing. It was kind of a sandy, muddy field. But I can recall at halftime, uh, I was in the, we were all in the dressing room waiting there, and two officials came in and said, we want to examine your shoes. I said, well, help yourself. Because they thought that I had special or some different kind of cleats or something on, but I just had the ordinary, ordinary cleats on, and they said, well, I guess you're all right. I understand you scored 11 touchdowns in one football game. Now, is that a real true story? 11 touchdowns and 9 extra points in one game. College, high school, work. High school. In high school. I'm, I see one of these fellows who's a big, in fact, he's in Toronto. He was played against me, and he says, Fritz, he says, I'll never forget this. I'd like to. But he said, you beat us 77 to nothing, and he said, you scored 11 touchdowns and 9 extra points. He said, I think you scored every damn time you got the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they paid you to play, you were still considered an amateur. Now, how did that happen? Well, uh, there was, I was supposed to have had a job in the Winnipeg Grand Exchange there, and I was getting my salary there as $125 a month, I think it was, that I got back. Mind you, back in those days, $125 was a pretty fair stipend in the dirty, dirty 30s. Fritzy Hansen remained in Calgary after retirement. In 1966, he became an original member of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Today, at 77, he remains busy in the insurance business, as well as many community efforts in his adopted city. Well, you were second to Lionel Conacher in the voting for Canada's Athlete of the Half Century. You were the first one to be inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame and so many other awards, and yet you were never awarded a place in the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. I'm sure that must bother you as it bothers many of us. Well, it does some when I see some of the names that come up every year and uh, in all types of sports, and I thought, well, I don't, I don't know, but maybe they'll get there. I was asked for the credentials at one time, and that's long ago, and I don't know what happened. Richie, when you moved from Winnipeg to Calgary, you brought a lot of football players with you, but I think the most significant move in Canadian football history was the fact that you helped them get Les Lear. I don't have any question about it because uh, Lear had, had a lot of experience in the States and he had a good connection down there, a great friend of Chili Walsh's. And so I told the director here, I says, hire Lear. Well, I said, who's Lear? So I told him about him. So they asked me to phone him, which I did, got Lear to come up here. And he brought in the defunct uh, Honolulu Warriors like Woody Strode, Johnny Aguirre, and that bunch. I stole a few guys from Winnipeg. And man, that was some football team. You were on the executive level in football for a long time, but never became a director, and I wondered why. Well, I never really uh, cared to be at the executive level. I was I, I was a director for a few years, but just as such, and I suppose I was kind of a renegade type of guy, of, and uh, I think I knew probably more about football. I figured I knew how it should be run. A lot of them didn't agree with me. As a matter of fact, they fired me or left me off the director at one time, and I'm sure they all admit now, a lot of them say, gee, Fritz, we should have listened. You're in the Who's Who in Minnesota's Hall of Fame. You're in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Do you think you were well rewarded in Canadian football? Oh, very much so. I've been most happy, most successful, married a great Canadian gal, got some wonderful, wonderful friends, and football having been an integral part of my life, uh, it seems to go on forever, even after 50 years, John. Fritzy Hansen, a name to remember, yesterday in the CFL. Nobody likes to see families break up. If you're like me, you do anything to help keep families happy and healthy. United Way funds many agencies in my town which help families facing marriage breakdown, problems with kids, alcoholism, debt, and many other troubles. We all feel good when families stay together, and that's one big reason why I support United Way. Hey, let's eat. Okay, sir. <laughs> this is the CTV Television Network. The best choices here on CJOH Cable 7. The 
CFL this week. Well, we've had a couple of games this week, and we're going to show you the highlights from them that have made the league much, much tighter as a result. It's just the type of action you continually see in the Canadian Football League. So now, let's go first of all to a game where the Toronto Argonauts, undefeated this season, six and a half point favorites at home against the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but Tom Clements was hot. He hits the very speedy number 73, Ron Johnson, who rambles 73 yards, and that is the big play for the Hamilton Tiger Cats because it sets up a touchdown for the Cats. The touchdown is the one that puts them away and running. Keith Baker, his favorite receiver, he goes in from 15 yards. It's a 10-1 to 1 game. Then Clements over the middle. Johnny Shepard, who did not catch much in his college career, but has turned into a standout receiver. It's 27 to 1. And now Joe Barnes trying to get them back in the game for the Argos, intercepted by Mike McIntyre. McIntyre gets away from Paul Pearson, the intended receiver. And Barnes again. He replaced Holloway. He's under pressure. 61 hits him, Mike Walker. It was Mike Walker and Barker and Trevor Covington on top of him all night. Bernie Ruoff now. His kick is blocked by Donovan Rose, who picks up the block himself and goes 32 yards for the touchdown. 31 to 12. Barnes still fighting. Gets it through to Pearson. He is in the end zone, and that's the way it ends. 31-18. That is 10 straight losses in league play by Toronto to Hamilton. In the Saskatchewan-Edmonton game, a very tight defensive battle. Warren Moon to Adele Smith, finally getting up and in ahead 12 to 6. Then Joe Adams finds Christopher France. 88 yards, runs out of his helmet, that's the best way to describe it. Makes it a 19-14 game. He had over 200 yards in this ball game. What a performance by DeFrance. But, back in action again, Warren Moon. And look at his favorite receiver, Brian Kelly, a stupendous reception. That definitely was a touchdown, 33 yards. It's 26 to 14. Here's Angelo Santusi, one of the fine Canadian backs for this Edmonton club, making it 33 to 15. And the biggest play of all, Dave Cutler. The field goal, it's good. Look at those Eskimos, 2,003 points by Cutler. The Victoria product, who went to Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. A world record over the legendary George Blanda by one point. And there he is, 37-year-old Dave Cutler. The Rothman Stars that took place during this past week, and it's no problem. The problem, as a matter of fact, is picking them out from all the great performances. Jane Sykes, believe it or not, despite the many years he has starred, has never won a Rothman Star. But he got it this week. He goes for 153 yards, and Sykes wins the offensive award. It was teammate Nick Golds who picked it up, and Rick Golds had an outstanding game. Along with Ed McElhenney, he's in on this sack of Ron Reeves and wins the lineman honors, Rick Golds. For the but the one that was selected this week as far as the defensive play was concerned was the one that just killed it as far as the Hamilton Tiger Cats were concerned. The big play for the BC Lions. Quarterback Tom Clements slips slightly. Moving in front, Kerry Parker, he's got that ball tucks it away as any good back does, and look at him go. And so there you have the Rothman Stars of the Week. Well, now, coming up on the CFL this week, some excellent football that maybe will start to break up the logjam. We've got CTV Friday Night's Football, BC at Edmonton, with Frank Rigney, Al McCann, and Dale Isaac. Ottawa at Hamilton, Toronto at Winnipeg, Calgary at Saskatchewan. Great excitement. We'll be back with more halftime in a moment. With Becker's Extra Savings Book, you'll have more fun at the X for a lot less. Pop into Becker's and get this $15 value for only $5.25. You get coupons for free food, plus over $7 worth of Midway tickets for only $5.25. Let's go to the X. With Becker's. Let's go to the X. Becker's Extra Savings Book. It's a deal. It's the X. On W5 for stories that touch us all. Be there Sunday nights on CTV for W5. Well, it's fun to be here in BC Place and a good football game. A strange one, though, Leaf. It's like we've had two different games. BC dominated the first part and now Calgary has come back. Absolutely. The BC Lion defense in the first half has just played exceptionally well, but the BC Lion offense has taken advantage of some opportunities that they have had. And I think the real star for them so far in this first half has been the play of their fine inside receiver, number 35, Sammy Green. A couple of touchdowns so far in this half, and Roy DeWalt has looked to him in the crunch. The first play early in the first quarter, Sammy Green 
screen, working against number 27, Richie Hall. Richie Hall has his back to the football, cannot locate it. Sammy Green does a nice 24-yard touchdown reception to get the, the BC Lions off to a 7-0 lead. But really, I just said the BC Lions defense has played well, and well they have. Three interceptions in the first half. The first one coming from number 7, Bernie Glear from the UBC Thunderbirds in the lineup as that sixth defensive back stepping in front of Daryl Smith a nice catch nice interception for Bernie Glear and just one of the one of many big plays that that defense came up with in the first half again Jerry Dottilio really getting off to a bad start we suggested he likes to come in in a relief role today he has to start he doesn't do a great job that time Tyrone Cruz stepping in front watch him run boy he looks like he was a fullback in high school way back Jerry Dottilio finally forcing him out but what that defense did was consistently give their offense good field position and that's the fastest highlight I've ever seen in my life. But that, of course, was another interception by Bernie Glear. I didn't realize he was that fast going down the sidelines. But Well, you were talking about Tyrone Cruz, and he can move. But let's take a look here at Sammy Green again. Well, Richie Hall, you see number 27, he just trips and falls down, and Sammy Green won't get an easier touchdown this year. Nevertheless, he was in the end zone, did make the catch for his second touchdown of the ballgame. Bernard Quarles comes in the ballgame. He does a good job getting his club moving. A nice two-yard touchdown reception by Willie Armstead. Willie, preceding that play, had made a long catch to set it up, but Bernard Quarles did a good job coming in off the bench. Well, this is the CFL on CTV. We'll have second-half action in a moment. So free and slip through the air. You're in your plane, you restored with a lot of care. Friends took their time and it turned out fine. Now there's plenty of good times to share. spot right on the air. You put yourself on the spot, my spot. She and Matt perfect for each other. Well, we just don't know it yet. Five seconds. You're skating on thin ice, kid. It's the only place I have to skate. There's an all-out battle for ratings, egos, and romance when it's time for Good Night Bean Town. New this fall on CTV. CTV. You could watch Live It Up Thursday night to get some money-saving ideas, but most people watch just for fun. Live It Up Thursday nights on CTV. Well, as you take a look at those first-half statistics and you digest them, let me tell you that at one point in this ballgame, the Lions had 72 yards of offense and Calgary had minus three. So it shows you how the Stampeders have returned under the quarterbacking of Bernard Quarles. We'll see if they can keep it up in the second half. J.T. Hay will be kicking off for the Stampeders, but he has got to have some trepidation because looking him right in the eye and standing back at the five-yard line is number 35, Sammy Green. Now, Sammy's not only a great pass receiver, but he returned to kickoff 112 yards against Hamilton last week. He can go the distance from any point in the field. As Don Matthews was saying yesterday, somebody said, why did you sign Sammy Green when he'd been cut by eight different teams? He said primarily because he can catch and he's fast. So it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It's what can you do today and tomorrow. And Green is doing it all for the BC Lions here early in 1983. JT Hay is set and so are we. Crawford takes it at the goal line. And he might have been better advised to let Sammy Green take it because Crawford only gets out to the 15-yard line. And for one of the few occasions in this ball game, the BC Lions are going to start in a real jackpot. They are back at their 15 after the 65-yard kickoff by J.T. Hay. Miscommunication on that catch. What's the BC Lions deep in the hole? And, boy, that's, if you're a Calgary Stampeder, you'd like to see that happen early in this third quarter, first play. You like to have them deep in their own zone. Let's see what that defense can come up with. I know many of you have just joined us. It was 18 to nothing at one point for the Lions. It is now 18 to 10 as we begin play here in the second half. Roy DeWalt at quarterback, and he will be called on a time count violation. And boy, we have seen an awful lot of that in the CFL this year. It's very, very difficult to quarterback in this league because you only have 20 seconds in the huddle and to put the ball into play as opposed to 30 in the National Football League. 
It's a great rule, though, Pat. It speeds up the game. No question gosh, about it. Super. The penalty is five yards, so the Lions are forced back to their 10, where it is first and 15. John Henry White, number 20, and Don Taylor, number 19, are the two setbacks for the Lions. DeWalt throws. John Henry was wide open and makes the catch, slips the first tackle, and gets very close to the first down out to the 25-yard line. Darrell Moyer was finally able to bring him down. John Henry White, game in and game out, a great performer, not only running the football, but now in a more pass-oriented offense, has an opportunity to catch the football. There you see it, three catches already today, but on a first and 15 situation, he picks up 14 yards, and that's a that's just a great play to get yourself out of a hole. So it's second down and about a yard to go for the first down. As the Lions would now like to put an offensive drive together because what that will do is not only hopefully culminate in some points, it'll keep the Calgary defense on the field for an extended period of time, and it will also eat up part of the clock. So let's see what happens here on second and a yard to go for the first down. Look who's that wing back, Big Nick Hebler. And this is John Henry White. First down and lots more over the 30 to about the 32. And again, it was Daryl Moyer bringing him down, number four, the safety in that Calgary defensive alignment. Nice job by the offensive right side of the BC Lions. There's Al Wilson the center, but Nick Hepler playing in that wing back position. Of course, you know he's a defensive end, but on the short yardage situation, comes in for a little extra blocking power, and John Henry White picks up that first down quite easily. John Henry from Louisiana Tech in his sixth year as a member of the Lions. Pound for pound, one of the strongest players on that team. DeWalt's pass is complete to Sammy Green. Sammy caught it at about the 41-yard line, which will be close to a first down. Richie Hull, the 5'6 inside safety for the Calgary Stampeders, was there to make the stop. Well, a lot of teams feel you can play ball control with the passing game. The BC Lions show you how they do it right now. Just a quick eight-yard out pattern to Sammy Green. Very safe play selection, good catch, and a nice situation. He picks up nine yards, second and one. I'd like to be the quarterback calling those plays. Well, they started deep in their own territory. As a matter of fact, they started at the 10. They've worked it out to the 41. They gave to John Henry White in this similar situation, but this time they give it instead to Taylor. And Taylor has the first down for the Lions as their march will continue. And a very impressive march it is as the BC Lions took the opening kickoff in this second half on their 15-yard line, have now marched it out to the 43, and two nice first downs in a row. Well, the BC Lions got away from the kind of static type of offense they had in years past. They used to go with two tight ends. Now they go with the pro style in CFL play, two wide outs, two inside receivers, as John Pankratz makes the catch for another first down and gets into Calgary territory before he's forced out by number 46, Ron Hopkins. I'll tell you, this guy can play already a Rothman's CFL Offensive Star of the Week. And watch, he'll get pushed off his pass pattern by number 46, Ronnie Hopkins, but he keeps his balance, keeps working, and nice reception first down. And well, when Don Matthews said he was making this fellow a starter, he knew what he was doing. Well, that's what he said. Pan Grants is going to start, and DeWald is my quarterback. Those have been two pretty good choices so far. That time, the ball was underthrown, looking for Sammy Green. Probably the worst pass that Roy DeWald has thrown today, rolling to his weak side, which is the left side for a right-handed quarterback, and just, quite frankly, threw off his back foot. No chance for Sammy Green to make the catch. Well, DeWalt has specific receivers that he likes to go to. He likes to go to Pankratz. He likes to go to Mervyn Fernandez. He likes to go to Sammy Green and also to John Henry White. The other fellas haven't caught the ball. I'm thinking specifically of Ned Armour, number eight, who's the fastest man in that BC lineup. DeWalt's pass for Pankratz, and he just couldn't come up with it. Ron Hopkins was defending against John Pankratz. The inside safeties are Hopkins and Hall, and they have the responsibility to look after Pankratz and Green. That's why their names are mentioned so frequently on the telecast. So the Stampeders bend, but they don't break. And now the BC Lions will be putting with 11 minutes, 28 seconds left to play in the third quarter. 
BC 18, Calgary 10. You know, it's interesting, Pat, we talk about Roy DeWald, and that was also one of the things that Don Matthews decided when he took over the head coaching spot. He said, Roy DeWald is going to be my number one quarterback. A lot of indecision over the years of who was number one between he and Joe Pow Pow, but DeWald certainly has taken over the leadership of this club. Hopkins with the punt return for the Stampeders gets out to the 16-yard line, and that's where the Stampeders will start when we come back. The Lions lead the Stampeders 18 to 10, and we will be back in just a moment. James Sykes with the handoff, and Sykes gets to the 20-yard line. He'll have a pickup of five. Upended there by Melvin Bird, number 10. And just a word of thanks to our spotter, our good friend Deke Collins, who has joined us for this afternoon's telecast. Deke, a very prominent Calgary attorney, helping us out, picking up those defensive tackles. And as he pointed out there, Melvin Bird came through. Well, James Sykes had 152 yards on the ground last week against the Concord, and I'm sure in the second half, they'd like to run the football a little more with him. Second and five for the Stampeders from their 20-yard line. Quarles, with a lot of time, had the ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. Mac Moore got his hand up in the air and just deflected the ball sufficiently that the pass could not be completed. Tremendous play by Mac Moore. If you're not going to get to the quarterback, can't make the sack or get the pressure, do the next best thing. Stick that big meat hook up there. Watch that. That pass could have been completed to Daryl Smith, but a nice play by number 78, Mac Moore, the fine defensive tackle. So that means that Mike McCagg will come into the ball game to punt. Larry Crawford, number 28. JoJo Heath, number 26, back to return it for the Lions, who lead it 18 to 10 with nine minutes, 50 seconds left in the third quarter. End over end ball. That is taken by Heath and then fumbled out of bounds at the BC 51 yard line. A 42 yard boot and we'll credit Heath with a three yard return even though he wasn't able to get the handle of it. Well, just a reminder that Dale Isaac, Frank Rigney, and Al McCann will be in Edmonton for what should be just a tremendous football game next Friday night. On Friday Night Football on CTV, the BC Lions and the Edmonton Eskimos, there's a possibility that first place could be at stake because if the Lions win today, they'll move into a tie with the Eskimos and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Waltz pass, looking for Fernandez, and Ned Armour comes up with the deflection. That's the second time in this ball game that one BC Lion player has deflected it to another. Well, that just tells you that these BC receivers have total concentration when they're going down the field because, as Pat mentioned, that ball intended for number 24, Mervyn Fernandez, over the middle. But number eight, Ned Armour, will come into your picture, picks up the deflection, never once takes his eyes off the football. That's just a great offensive reception. Ned Armour, a rookie from San Diego State University, gives BC first down at the Calgary 33-yard line. A good break for the Lions, a tough one for the Stampeders. Armour looking for his 
first touchdown of the year. Can't come up with it as Ray Odoms was providing the defensive coverage. You know, Pat, it's interesting. For years, there were very few teams in the CFL that would attack Calgary's fine cornerbacks, Ray Odoms and Terry Irvin. But today, it appears as though Roy DeWald not worried about them in the least. He's constantly worked Fernandez on those hook patterns against Terry Irvin and now sending the speedster Ned Armour deep against one of the fine cornerbacks, Ray Odoms. So it is second and 10. Lions from the Calgary 33-yard line. 8.25 left in the third quarter. 18 to 10. Lions lead it. Don Taylor takes it over the middle and gets inside the 20 to about the 16-yard line. Terry Irvin finally brings him down, number 28. But it's a 16-yard gain for Don Taylor. Sam Peters trying to apply some pressure to Roy DeWall. Come with the all-out blitz. Darrell Moyer has to pick up Don Taylor out of the backfield. Taylor, nice reception. Gets the first down. Very impressive march. Roy DeWall to put together here in the third quarter. Taylor, originally drafted by the Ottawa Rough Riders, has been with the BC Lions and now playing a prominent role under coach Don Matthews. knocked down by Ron Hopkins but tremendous pressure put on the BC quarterback by Rick Goltz who already has accounted for two sacks in this ball game. Well we have a chance to see Roy DeWalt he just simply ran out of time looking down for John Henry White in the end zone but Ronnie Hopkins up in the air makes a nice reception. There you see Mervyn Fernandez he's trying to work free but good cover job once again by Terry Irvin. the Stampeders pick up an injury on the play. Their nose tackle, Randy Troutman, is down. And boy, I tell you, this is a magnificent facility, a tremendous playing surface, but it does get hot, and so, you know, the fellas pick up cramps and everything else. That's the score, 18 to 10, the Lions over the Stampeders. We'll be back in just a moment. Carlsberg Light, all right. People here say it's one good beer. Carlsberg Light, all right. Cold as ice, it's one real good beer. Crack a cold one and you'll see why it's got that great light taste for me. Carlsberg Light, all right. Raise a cheer for good beer. Well, it certainly does my heart good starting the day surrounded by the creme de la creme of the muffler business. Now, some of you seem a trifle reserved when it comes to talking about the speedy muffler king guarantee. Well, with professionals like yourselves and a muffler guaranteed for as long as the customer owns the car, well, I'd say there's no harm in bragging a little. <laughs> All right, let's move. And remember, everyone who comes to speedy is a somebody, and a somebody expects the best. Right. Yeah. That's what's happened in the ball game to this point. Over 500 yards of offense, and we still have half the third quarter to go. It is second down, 10 yards to go from the 16-yard line. Flags are down. And DeWalt goes down as well at about the seven-yard line. Bernie Morrison was there to bring him down to the turf. There is a flag on the field. Well, the added feature in that BC Lions offense is the ability of Roy DeWalt to scramble and get outside. That time he had no choice. The pressure was coming. The pressure due entirely to the, beast, or the Calgary Stampeder defensive line being offside. But boy, Roy DeWalt's a great athlete. He can get out and run and really make things happen. Really, you know, in the first part of this ball game, the BC Lions had an opportunity to really close the door on the Stampeders. They were not able to effectively administer the coup de grace. They must do so now if they're going to win this game. It is third and about two yards to go for the first down. The give is to John Henry White, who gets to the five-yard line and should have the first down. Bernie Morrison was there to stop him at that point. But it is first down Lions at the five-yard line. Well, you see John Henry White. 
Detroit following the lead blocking of number 19, Donnie Taylor, the center Al Wilson, right guard Glenn Leonard. They just pushed that Stampeder defensive line back. And a good play to pick up that first down. The BC Lions are moving, and as Pat astutely mentioned, this is really where they can put the nail in the coffin. They have to take advantage of the good field position they've had. It'll be first touchdown to go for the BC Lions from the Calgary five-yard line with six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. I'll tell you how much they think of their running game, Pat. First and goal in the five, they put their short yardage team in with Nick Kevler and his pals, and they're going to try and run that football in Pierce. Lions lead it by eight points, 18 to 10. John Henry White. No, sir. Only gets a couple of yards. Darrell Moyer was there to bring him down. Moyer has played a very solid game, and so too has Bernie Morrison, the veteran linebacker from the University of Manitoba. Now there's a great mismatch. Nick Kepler out blocking on number 32, Ray Odoms. They got into a little pushy match out there, and I don't like the Blades' chances in that one. A lot of courage. Well, Blade, sure. of course, is Ray Odoms, the eight-year veteran from the University of Alabama. The Blade got up to 165 pounds one year and went on Weight Watchers. <laughs> Second down. Touchdown to go. Lions from the three-yard line. Again, John Henry White. Lottery spot check. My provincial tickets at home. I'll get it. Right now, the lottery that made Fridays famous could make you a winner any day of the week. If you get stopped with a current provincial ticket, you win $5 on the spot. And you can win up to $1,500. The provincial lottery spot check. Don't get caught without a ticket. <laughs> Where'd she go? Oh, she got off at Maple. <laughs> We've got five minutes, 19 seconds left to play in the third quarter. There's the BC March. It was impressive. As a result, the Lions lead the Stampeders 25 to 10. Let's see if the Stampeders can rebound. The Saglia's kickoff will come to Daryl Smith at the pin. Let's go to Bill Stevenson. We've seen all of John Henry White today, and I think Calgary's seen more of them than they want to, but John Henry are having a great ball game. But I want to ask you, this offense has changed under Don Matthews now. He's more passing than running. Has that affected your style? No, not at all. I think I caught more passing than I rushed for last year, so it, it didn't affect my game at all. Do you like it better this way? I love it because it's, it's more wide open. We can do more things with it. John Henry White certainly did a lot of things with it on that drive. He ended up scoring the touchdown. Now the Stampeders will try to come back. Boros pass. Complete to Tom Forzani at the 52. And Cheech, who's having his best year in many, many, gets into the 50-yard line before JoJo Heat, number 26, brings him down at that point. Well, Tom Forzani running a tremendous pass pattern against number 26, JoJo Heath, the cornerback obtained from the Toronto Argonauts in the 
Watch, it. Watch the move. Breaking into the middle of the field and then turning it back to the sidelines. Absolutely turns number 26, Jojo Heath, completely around. And a nice nifty move after he makes the catch to pick up a little extra yardage. First, first down of the second half for the Calgary Stampeders. Quarles takes a real shot from Ebler after he releases the ball. But Quarles has been impressive since coming on in relief of Jerry Dottilio. Bernard Quarles gets to about the 42-yard line, and he'll have a pickup of eight. He's a rookie from the University of Hawaii. He is definitely the Stampeders' quarterback of the future, to be certain. He may be the quarterback of the present. Well, and Pat, one of his outstanding features is his ability to tuck that football under his arm and run with it. And that time, when things are not the way you want it, the best way to pick up some yardage, tuck it under and run. He picks up eight yards, second and two. 25 to 10, Lions over Calgary with three and a half minutes left in this third quarter. James Sykes backwards, fights his way for the first down and gets it. You know, the din that you've been hearing is Crazy George going to work again, but I think they got the wrong name. Instead of Crazy George, it should be those crazy, wonderful, wild fans. They really cheer it for their BC Lions. I mean, there's, you know that I think the greatest fans in the world are in Saskatchewan, but you got to take a look at these BC fans, the way they get worked up. They've got to love football to come inside on a day like this because it is absolutely beautiful here in Vancouver today and yesterday. But it's been a poor summer, I understand. Kevin Ponar with the sack for the BC Lions, the first one this afternoon. Ponar is in the ball game because Rick Klassen went down with an ankle injury, and he comes through with the big sack. Let's give some credit to that BC Lions secondary. They did a good job once again of shutting down those Calgary receivers. Consequently, as Pat mentioned, Kevin Konar in to pick up the sack. Two minutes, 25 seconds left to play in the third quarter. You see it, three sacks for Calgary, one for the Lions. BC 25, Stampeders 10, second and 16 for the Stampeders. A long drop by Quarles, and this pass reflected away neatly Jojo Heath stepped right in front of Mike Levenseller at the last moment to knock the pass away. Unfortunately for Bernard Quarles, he saw Mike Levenseller open just a little too late. It gave Jojo Heath the necessary time to react to the football, accelerate through it, and a nice play to break up that pass. Don Matthews and his coaching staff on the sidelines. Boy, I'll tell you, they've got a solid football club here in B.C., they are going to contend for that Western Conference Championship unquestionably. Do they ever want to win that game next Friday on our CTV Friday Night Telecast 2 out of Edmonton? And you were mentioning Klassen, by the way, Pat. Klassen says the ankle's not bad, but the reason he's not playing is he's trying to make sure that he's ready for the game in Edmonton. Well, that's a big one for them. They'll have their hands full because the Eskimos are looking good. Hunt goes out of bounds by Mike McTagg. Let's see where they mark it. He was hoping to get it inside the 10. And he gets it just outside by about a foot. So that's a great punt by Mike McTagg as the Lions will start just outside their 10-yard line. A 34-yard punt. Now, that may not sound very impressive, but he accomplished what he wanted to do, and that was put the Lions in a hole. Well, more and more you're seeing that with the kickers in the CFL, sacrificing the chance to get a single point to try and hem the other team deep in their own end of the field because, as we all know, field position plays such a big part in the CFL. Congratulations to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who moved into a first place tie with Edmonton beating Montreal 30 to 25 this afternoon. The Walt with a lot of time goes deep for Sammy Green. It is picked out by Daryl Moyer. Moyer gets the ball into the 27 yard line and when we're talking about our Carling O'Keefe game stars, Daryl Moyer is going to have to be a prime candidate because he has been outstanding for the Stampeders today. Well, he certainly has Roy DeWalt back to pass. Now, he's looking deep for Sammy Green. He has to put a little touch on the football to get it over the linebackers. Daryl Moyer reads the play perfectly from his free safety spot. That's a nice interception. Good run back, and boy, the Stampeders are coming back. Well, we've got a minute 10 left to play in the third quarter. Daryl Moyer last week intercepted a Ron Reeves pass and returned it for a major score against the Concord, and now he gives the Stampeders a life. First down, Calgary at the BC 28-yard line. Quarles pass, good to Smith, 
And Darrell Smith is inside the 25 to about the 23. Larry Crawford makes the stop at that point, number 28. The kind of plays we suggested would be successful for Bernard Quarles when the BC Lion defense is dropping everybody off in that deep zone coverage. Let someone come underneath, such as Darrell Smith, make the catch, get you in a second and five or second and four situation, what they have. Tom Forzani comes out of the ball game. Mike McTagg goes in to replace him on second. And let's call it six yards to go. Calgary at the 23-yard line of the Lions. the Edmonton Eskimos. CTV's Friday Night Football, August 12th. Blackouts in effect. Keeping up with the world of football can be a sport in itself and a full-time one at that. I'm Peter Young and to try to make it easier to stay on top of the ever-changing events of the CFL and Canadian college football, tune in to This Week in Football. The program provides highlights of the week plus features on the stars of the game past and present. This Week in Football, just part of the sports-packed weekend you expect and enjoy on CTV. Get the most out of a great sport with This Week in Football this weekend.
Well, we'll take a look at Sammy Green's brilliant kickoff return right after this play. DeWalt's pass looking for John Henry White goes incomplete. But Sammy Green returned the kickoff last week against Hamilton for 112 yards. He fumbled it there. He fumbled it then. Watch the result. Boy, this is just a great individual effort. We'll just let you have a look at it because he gets away from Mike Levenseller there and down the field. Boy, he is just a tremendously exciting football player. You know, his coach, Don Matthews, was telling us yesterday, he said he marches to a different drummer. That's fine. I don't care about that. I want him to perform on the field, and the man has done every single thing I've ever asked him to do. Flags come down. Armour was offside for the B.C. Lions, the wide receiver to the left of the screen. You know, Pat, it's refreshing to hear the comments of Don Matthews because so many times coaches let personalities get in the way of their decisions of who is going to be on the roster, but he really lets Sammy Green and a few others do their own thing. As long as they perform, that's all he's concerned about. As long as some you know, of their... I was going to say, Lee, the most interesting Offside, thing to me... B.C. number eight, decline, third down. The most interesting thing to me about Don Matthews is he was regarded in Edmonton as being a real defensive genius, and you know what the defensive players of the Eskimo side of him. And here, he's really an overseer. Says he doesn't have anything really to do with the defense. He lets his coaches handle it all. Well, I think he put a general philosophy in, though, Bill, and the assistant coaches are just carrying out some of his views about motion and how he uses his inside receivers so well. So the penalty was against Ned Armour. Declined by the Stampeders, and Pasaglia is punting. All in the end zone. Now, we're going to have an argument here. They may say he came out to the one-yard line and went back in. Let's see what they're going to rule. If he came out to the one and went back in, it should be a safety touch. They may rule that he did not come out, period. Well, absolutely. We'll have a look at that again because, as Pat mentioned, if you come out of that end zone, you cannot retreat without giving up the, the two points. Let's have a look. There's the foot on the line. No question. He's out. Should have been a safety touch. Instead, it turns out to be a 45-yard single by Louis Pasaglia to make it a 26 a 16 ball game in favor of the Lions. Once again, let's have another look. There's no question. His hand is at least out in the so field of play. Foot. So is his foot. And you know, Pat, that's a big turnaround because BC would have got two points and Calgary would have had to kick off the football. So now Bernard Quarles needs points and he needs them in a hurry. 13.45 left to play in the ball game. Quarles is going deep. Daryl Smith is there and makes the catch at the 38 yard line. We've got a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Well, both teams possessing tremendous inside receivers, but Daryl Smith, a super catch, working deep downfield on Melvin Bird, and a nice delivery by Bernard Quarles. Unfortunately, the play will go for naught. It appears as though the Calgary Stampeders will be called for holding, but that's a nice catch. First down repeated. Melvin Bird in his second year from Cal Davis. Number 10 has been burned a couple of times today, but I think with the inside receivers that all clubs possess, it's not really fair to expect that the defensive back is always going to be able to knock it down. 26 to 16 is the score. The pass is incomplete. Quarles was under tremendous pressure, and now a flag comes down. And we may have an intentional grounding call. And if that is the case, it'll be lost of down, putting it to second down and putting the Stampeders even deeper in their own territory. Really, Pat, looked like a mix-up on a play selection. There was really nobody out there. Tom Perzani was just clearing out downfield, not even looking back. I think there, somebody ran the wrong pattern. No penalty applied. Well, they ruled that uh, there was, in fact, a receiver in the area. What happened was referee Lauren Woods overruled. And, of course, that's his prerogative to do so. So it'll be second down. The ball at the 25-yard line. Second and 20 for the Stampeders. A good job by Melvin Bird, who simply would not allow Daryl Smith to get by him on that occasion. Let's go to Bill Stevenson. 
Sammy Green, the man who, uh, well, you've seen on your television screens more than anybody else because of that remarkable touchdown return. Sammy, you're trying to hog him again this week on all the sportscasts. A great run. So what makes a great runner? Is it just automatic or what do you uh, No, for? you have to have a good special team. Uh, we work on our special teams throughout the week. We work on our special team more than we work on our offense and defense. And um, every time I get the ball, they know that something's going to happen. And um, we just contribute everything. We just work hard. That makes a great special team. And so you're looking for your blockers. Yes, yeah, looking for your blockers and just run and look for your blockers and try to do the best you can. That's about it. Best is pretty good with Sammy Green. <laughs> no problem. We're getting better. Larry Crawford from the 40-yard line. And Mike Levenseller with a good downfield tackle for the Stampeders. So when we come back, it'll be first down. BC at their own 43. They lead it 26 to 16, and we will be back in just a moment. Somehow you've got to keep it alive, no matter what the cost. But right from the first time you played, you knew you had found your game. And right from the first time you tried OB, we'll bet you'd found your beer. That's why you just say OB for that great taste in beer. OB, OB, oh yeah, you just say OB. Buy your new camera at Black's, because they're giving a free gift with every camera purchased. Plus, your new 35mm camera is covered by Black's one-year accidental impact guarantee. And, oh, I'm sorry. Black's has great prices, great service, and Black's money-back guarantee. Plus, with every roll of film developed at Black's, you get a chance to win over 200,000 prizes. It's great. Free gifts, Black's guarantees, and great value. Now, where are you going to buy your new camera? Black's is photography. Lions lead at 26 to 16, and now the Calgary Stampeder defense has to come up big as it has done so many times throughout the course of this season. They've got to get the ball back for their offense. They trail by 10 points with 12 minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the game. Over the middle to Sammy Green, and Green gets to the 48 yard line. The fans wanted a piling on penalty, but none comes. Steve Wilburn was a little late coming in there after Bernie Morrison had made the tackle. Boy, he sure was. I can't believe he didn't get tagged for a unnecessary roughness call there. But what a day Sammy Green's had. He's just tremendous, isn't he? Exciting. Every time he touches that football, look at that. Seven catches, the big kickoff returns. Two of them for touchdowns. Oh, they love him here in Vancouver. They were yelling, Sammy, Sammy, a few seconds ago. Second and five for the Lions from their 48-yard line. John Henry White. And John Henry fights for about four yards. It looks like he may come up about a half a yard to a yard short. Danny Bass was there to make the tackle for the Stampeders. Pat, well, we have an opportunity. There's a friend of mine in Regina, Bob McAfee, who's recuperating in hospital from an accident. And Bob, if you're listening today, we wish you all the best and hope you have a speedy recovery. Well, we know it was a tough accident, Bob, but we know the kind of guy you are, too, and that you'll fight back just as hard as you can. Just as the Stampeders have to fight back right now, trailing by 10 points with 11 and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. And John Henry comes up a yard short of the first down. So they send Louis Pasaglia out. They're not going to take any chances right now. Put the Stampeders deep in a hole and see if the Lion defense can contain it. Absolutely. I think an excellent call by Don Matthews. He has a chance to pin the Stampeders deep in their own ter territory, make them drive pretty near the length of the football field. So good decision on his part. Richie Hall, number 27, and Ron Hopkins, 46. Back to return this punt from Louis Pasaglia. from his 13-yard line. And he fights his way out over the 20, but the Stampeders are going to be in a hole once again. With 11 minutes exactly left to play in the ball game, it is BC 26, Calgary 16. We'll be back in just a moment. When you got to have good parts and dependability for stars. You got to go down go. You're talking AC down go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go, Delco, AC, Delco, we're talking AC, Delco. 
and Bass Clef present Diana Ross at the Super X Grandstand Thursday, August 18th. Tickets now on sale. We're in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia in one of the truly outstanding architectural designed edifices anywhere in the world. BC Place. 26 to 16. The Lions lead the Stampeders. Calgary with the ball, needing first downs. Quarles has Borzani out there, but it is knocked away. Had the ball been able to get there a little quicker, Larry Crawford would not have been able to recover, nor would Melvin Bird, and Borzani would have had himself a big first down. Well, that's a tough throw for Bernard Quarles, throwing back across the grain and that distance, but good reaction by Larry Crawford to knock that ball away. Tom Borzani, two catches in the ball game, but the most important statistic for Tom so far this year is those five touchdowns. Well, you know, Don Matthews was telling us yesterday that he wanted his club to be more consistent. I think they've been pretty consistent all day long, both on offense and defense. They've moved the ball well offensively. They have certainly played sound defense. Melvin Bird is slightly shaken up after being involved in that play. You know, it's interesting, Pat. Sammy Green talked about the effort that they put into their special teams throughout the week, and I think that's evident here today because the BC Lions really have had good field position throughout the day and it certainly makes your offense a lot easier to call your play selection for Roy DeWald and uh, as well for your defense. You know, Leif, I can't help but think that if this Calgary club can ever get that offense going and it's been sort of chugging at half speed for the past few seasons, with the defense they've got, they would really be a threat. Oh. They're a threat without it, but imagine if they had the offense. No question, Bill. Defensively, week in and week out, they play very well. The offense, though, is as you said, is inconsistent. Quarles pass to Mike Levenseller. He made the catch, but he's ruled out of bounds. And so Mike McTagg and the punting unit will come out onto the field with 10 minutes and 8 seconds left to play in the ball game. BC 26, Calgary 16. Well, it's a tremendous reception by Mike Levenseller, but unfortunately out of bounds, and the BC Lions will once again received this punt around their 40 to 45 yard line and as I just said they have enjoyed excellent field position throughout this football game. Bernard Quarles has not completed a pass in his last four but he has been effective at times throughout this ball game since coming in to replace Jerry Dottilio. Jojo Heath from his 38 yard line and he doesn't get much maybe out to the 42 so that 52-yard boot by McTagg gets the Stampeders out of a bit of a jackpot, but the Lions with nine minutes, 38 seconds left to play in this game don't have to score any more points. They lead it by 10 at the moment. There was an interesting development that Leaf explained possibly before we joined the entire network. Jerry Dottilio had started, and so they had two import running backs, Ray Krause and James Sykes, in the lineup. And they were hoping to run the ball effectively today, but then when Dottilio couldn't do the job, they had to take Krause out of the ball game and insert Rob Forbes because of the import-non-import ratio. That pass goes incomplete. It'll be second and ten. BC from their 42-yard line. Good day for Roy DeWalt. 21 out of 35 for 274 yards, two touchdowns. The attendance today, 37,496. Here come the Stampeders, but DeWalt gets it away. Not enough, however, for the first down. Mervyn Fernandez made the catch, but Terry Irvin was on him immediately. Well, second and ten, and Mervyn Fernandez saw the blitz coming. He got a little excited, just broke off that pass pattern a little too early in front of Terry Irvin, and he 
comes up a couple of yards short. I'm sure that was not his intention, but nevertheless, the BC Lions will have to relinquish the football, giving the Stampeders another kick in the cat here. With enough time to come back, they've got eight minutes, 45 seconds left to play in the ball game, and the Stampeders trail by 10. requires a mature, experienced account executive for the local sales office. Applicants should have a strong background in broadcast sales and a good working knowledge of the television industry. Please reply in writing to Post Office Box 5813, Station F, Ottawa, Ontario, K2C, 3G6. Attention, the local sales supervisor. All replies will be kept strictly confidential. Hopkins on the sidelines after being shaken up once again. Kruger comes in to replace him, number 37. It is second down, 10 yards to go, B.C. from the Calgary 12-yard line. Walt with an awful lot of time. The pass to Armour, no good. Well, he had a shot at him, but Ray Odoms just wouldn't let him catch it. Ned Armour has tremendous speed. The question is, how good are his hands? Well, that's usually the knock against the fellas that have the outstanding speed. You always wonder, can they catch the football, really? Not really a tough catch there. I think he should have made it. And, but Sammy Green, who was the primary target for Roy DeWall, coming across the middle, he gets a little bit of a rough ride. And number 
58, James West just throws him to the ground. That destroyed the pass pattern. Nevertheless, Walt had a chance to hit that armor, and armor dropped the football. So Louis Pisaglia will try for his second field goal of the afternoon. This one will come from 19 yards out. It is good. So we've got seven minutes, six seconds left to play in the ball game, and now the BC Lions lead the Calgary Stampeders 29 to 16. And if the Lions hang on to this lead, they will move into a tie for first place in the Western Conference standings with the Edmonton Eskimos and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Bombers, 30 to 25 victors this afternoon in the Olympic Stadium in Montreal over the Concord. Should be a great matchup next Friday night in Edmonton. I'll be watching that one when I'm up at McGregor Lake at my mother's cottage and saying hello to my old friends, the Logues, and everybody else up there. Daryl Smith makes the reception for a big first down before he was cut down by Nelson Martin. But he gives the Stampeders field position inside the BC 50-yard line, a 26-yard pickup. Well, as you look around the Canadian Football League, the caliber of the slot backs that all the teams have is just incredible. Here today, fellows like Willie Armstead, and Sammy Green, Daryl Smith, it's just phenomenal. It's the kind of quality receivers that all the teams come up with. Well, it's so true, Leaf. That's why it's such an exciting league. Quarles, no good looking for Mike McTagg. He tried to make one of those circus catches, but he would have been out of bounds in any event. Bill? Simon Fraser, University Woods ball player who has just been a sensation this year, John Pankratz. John, the thing I want to ask you about is you seem to be getting a lot of bumping and shoving and a lot of tough work out there. Are you? Are they treating you unfairly? Well, Calgary's always been a physical ball club, and uh, they like to pressure you as much as I do. And I'm trying to get a push off, and they're holding and grabbing, so it's sort of both ways. We're both doing it, but they're a physical ball club, and we're and we're just trying to play our game up. Do you find them tougher than most teams? Oh, their defense is definitely tougher than most other clubs. Good comment from John Pankratz as the Stampeders, with a second and ten, need a big play. from Nick Hebler and maybe he would have been wise to just throw that ball out of bounds. Well, it so often happens with a rookie quarterback. He doesn't know when to just unload it and save the chance for the interception this time looking deep down for 96 Rob Forbes. Larry Crawford high in the air. A nice interception and really the BC Lions defense. Their sixth turnover of the ball game that they've had and give them full marks. They've come to play today. And they will come to play next Friday in Edmonton in what should be a classic encounter. Don Matthews goes back to the club where he built his reputation as an assistant coach with Huey Campbell, and he'll bring his BC Lions into Commonwealth Stadium for what should be just a great matchup, and you'll see it on Friday Night Football here on CTV. So, you know, we keep talking about the defenses getting tired because they're on the field so much. How about this Lions offense? Well, Bill, when you're winning and you're on offense, you never get tired, let me tell you. And you're behind, if you're behind in Calgary's defense, that's when you start to feel those bumps and bruises a little more. But if you're out in front and playing offense, it's just entirely fun in a game like this. Don Matthews watching as his great, great linebacker, Glenn Jackson, comes off the field. There's another fellow who's just had a marvelous career with the Lions, has never won any big awards, but as good a linebacker as there is in the league. First down, Lions from their 36-yard line. 5.25 left to play in the ball game. John Henry White picks his way for maybe two or three yards, not much more. BC 29, Calgary 16. The Stampeders had hoped to climb into a tie for first place. They'll fall a couple of points back now. John Henry, well, he came into this ball game with a 6.8 yard average. It's fallen a little bit, but he's done the job. When they needed the first downs, he was able to get them. It is second down, eight yards to go, Lions right now. That pass, DeWalt was looking for Sammy Green, but it was well overthrown. So that'll bring to 
Shagley and the punting unit back out onto the field. And the staff beaters aren't dead yet. But they've got to be, they have to be able to move the football or they can just get ready to go home right now. No question about that. The defense has really kept them in the ballgame today. They played very well. You know, the offense giving up six turnovers to the BC Lions and, and the defense really only having 29 points scored against them. Against such an explosive offense to the BC Lions, I think it's a credit to the Calgary defensive players. I'll tell you what else is a credit. DeWald has only completed two of the last ten, so it tells you how well the Stampeders are playing defensively. Richie Hall. Well, he's got some room. He's got some moves, too. A flag comes down as Hall is decked at the 33-yard line. John Henry White made the stop. A 52-yard boot by Pisaglia, a 17-yard return. He's only five foot six, the little guy. But he plays in there as a regular in their secondary. He returns punts, returns kickoffs. Well, he's a great athlete, and they tell me that it was really his height that hurt him. He would have been a high draft choice in the NFL had he been much taller. And our old pal Frank Rigney drops back. I know Bowling. he'll be excited about Calgary that. Calgary 32. That Edmonton game next Friday night that he and Dale Isaac and Al McCann will be bringing us here on CTV. And Riggs, I just want to tell you again, partner, boy, yesterday was one of the great days of my life. I think he wants another ride, Riggs. <laughs> he looked good swimming in the ocean, didn't he, Bill? That was great, just like a whale. First down. Cruz was able to force the Calgary quarterback out of bounds at the 22-yard line. We're down to three minutes, 58 seconds left to play in the ball game. The Lions jumped out early, 18 to nothing. The Stampeders fought back to make it 18 to 10. But they haven't been able to close the gap from that point, and the Lions just keep adding to it. Jerry Dottilio started the day, couldn't get it going. Danny Bass and that defense have played well. But it doesn't matter how well the defense plays if you can't move the football. And that's what the Stampeders are having problems with again today. Quirles floats it up. Again, it's picked off by Larry Crawford. And Crawford steps out of bounds at the 31-yard line of the Stampeders. Well, once again, one of those passes that just should not be thrown, but at this stage in the ball game, you have to take a chance. Larry Crawford equal to the task, his second interception in a row, high in the air looking for Daryl Smith, but that's a tough spot for a young quarterback. Really, at this stage of the game, you have to put it up and hope for something to happen. What happened was Larry Crawford made the interception. And that normally is what happens, too, when you're trying to make things up on the go. He was desperate, nothing ventured, nothing gained, as you pointed out, but it was almost inevitable that it would be picked off, and it was by Larry Crawford. So the Lions have possession, first down at the Calgary 32. John Henry White. He hangs on to the football as he gets into about the 27. Danny Bass, one of those in there to make the stop. And with three minutes and four seconds left to play in the ball game, the Lions lead it 29 to 16. We'll be back in just a moment. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Blazer. Available with a revolutionary Instatrack four-wheel drive system. Shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. Try that with any other four-wheel drive system, import or domestic. Taking charge with the most fuel-efficient V6 power available. S10 Blazer. No wonder they're calling it 4x4 Truck of the Year. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. On September 18th, will you be part of the Terry Fox Run? Remember, you don't have to run. You can walk, roller skate, bicycle, anything, but participate. It's important. 29 to 16, the BC Lions have salted this one away. Three minutes and four seconds left to play in the ball game. BC in possession of the football at the 27-yard line of the Stampeders, where it is second down and about four yards to go for another first down. John Henry White 
Cracks inside the 25 to about the 23. Now he'll be short of the first down. And it'll be interesting to see if they bring Louis Pasaglia back out onto the field. They're leading by 13. I would think that Don Matthews would like to get another field goal. Actually, like another touchdown. Oh, Pat, I'd go for it in this situation. If they come up short in third down, I'd go for it. Retain possession, to turn it over. Still, Calgary has a long way to go. Well, it's true, but then if you look at it this way, if you kick the field goal, there's nothing they can do to win it.
gotten away except that Glenn Jackson stuck his leg out and virtually tripped him. Well, Bernard Quarles, he'll have many more days to try and get that offense moving. Did a pretty good job in the second quarter to get the Stampeders close, but really I think it was the dominating defense of the Lions in the second half that's been the downfall of Bernard Quarles and the Stampeder offense. We've got 50 seconds left to play in the ball game. It is British Columbia 32, Calgary 16. Mike McTagg back to punt, standing inside his 10-yard line. Oh, this is a beauty. This forces Crawford back to his 26-yard line. And he just goes underground at about the 37. So the Lions will be able to run out the clock. 59 yards, the punt by Mike McTagg, a nine yard return. And again, we want to thank everybody at BC Place for making our stay so enjoyable. And again, if you have an opportunity to come out to the West Coast, make it a point to drop in and see this tremendous structure. Boy, I hope we get one in Toronto. We desperately need one. And if it was like this, it'd be a beauty. Sure would, and from a player's standpoint, it's such a great facility to play in. You have none of the elements to worry about, the rain, the sun getting in your eyes or whatever, and it just is a truly fantastic place to play from a player's standpoint. Clock will start on the snap of the ball. Hand it off inside for about four or five yards. John, alone. let's check that and make it Don Taylor, number 19, the ball carrier. Well, the Stampeders have played well defensively. The Lions have played well on both sides of the ball. They've been aggressive. They've been attacking. That's what Don Matthews wants with his football team, and they are certainly rounding into form. The Stampeders had a chance in the third quarter to really get into the game, but the BC Lion defense just would not allow it. John Henry to about the 45-yard line, and we'll have time for one more play. A flag comes down. Terry Irvin mixing it up a little bit. And you can understand that, I suppose, the frustration of having played so hard and coming out on the wrong end of a 32-16 score. But the penalty will go against the Stampeders, and... Nothing exciting is going to happen from this point on because the Lions know they only have to run one more play and that should do it. He's passed. Calgary number 28. Gary Irvin assessed the rough play penalty. So it's a convincing win for the Lions. And as Lee pointed out, when you saw the Western Conference standings, they are now tied with Edmonton and Winnipeg, the Bombers' victors in Montreal today. Let the clock run down. And with one second showing on the clock. Uh, they'll have to snap the ball one more time to end this game officially. But I'll tell you, don't write the Stampeders off. If Bernard Quarles can get his act together, as he showed at various times in this afternoon's ball game, they can be a factor in the Western Conference. That's it. This football game is history. The BC Lions have defeated the Calgary Stampeders 32 to 16. They've done it convincingly and in winning, the Lions have moved into a first place tie. The CFL on CTV will continue in a moment. Let's play ball. the Toronto Blue Jays in action on your local CTV station. Check the listings for games in your area. Come on, come on, come on, it's time for CTV. Come on, it's time, we're only just beginning. Strike up the band, this is the place to be. Come on, it's time to join the celebration with CTV. We're welcoming everybody. Players Tennis 
on CTV. Two great weekends of action. Players Tennis, August 13th, 14th, 20th, and 21st, here on CTV. Carling O'Keefe Sports Offensive and Defensive Game Stars as selected by our broadcast crew. From the BC Lions, wide receiver Sammy Green is the offensive star. And from the Lions, rover Bernie Gleer is the defensive star. And here is the rookie head coach, Tom Matthews. Don, I know that you're very pleased, but what is the biggest stride that's been made by this BC Lion Club under you this year? Well, without a doubt, it has to be the uh, play of the defense. and. Uh, I really said since the beginning of the training camp uh, up until right now that our big, large strides have been in the secondary. Uh, we played with a little adversity today. We lost Rick Clausen and we played, we lost uh, Curry before the game with a neck injury. So uh, they really played well on defense. They're going to the ball. And uh, I think certainly the gigantic strides we made have to be on the defensive side this year. And I'll tell you, you've got to be waiting to go into Edmonton next Friday. Well, you know, it's another two-point football game, and any time you play in your conference, it's a big game. Calgary was a big game today, and uh, we certainly are pleased that we are out of it with a victory. I know that uh, Edmonton and Warren Moon and Brian Kelly and all those guys are awful tough customers, and we're going to do the best we can. They're going to be waiting for you, Don. Good luck. Sure that. <laughs> all right. We'll be back with the CFL on CTV in a moment. You look forward to it all week long, and then you get knocked around so much you wonder why you do it. But right from the first time you played, you knew you'd found your game. And right from the first time you tried OV, we'll bet you'd found your beer. That's why you just say OV for that great tasting beer. This game brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, Brewers of OV, the Carlsberg family, and Miller High Life. The Canadian Football Hall of Fame, a tribute to the men who have made Canadian football the great sport we know today. Next time you're in Hamilton, be sure to visit this national shrine to Canadian professional football football conference. Three teams are tied for first place. The Edmonton Eskimos, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the BC Lions, right behind them, the Calgary Stampeders. As great football and exciting action continues on the CFL. The game today was a 32-16 story of the BC Lions over the Calgary Stampeders. Next Friday, the biggest game thus far of this season is the Lions with Don Matthews go into the home of his former club, the Edmonton Eskimos. And that's going to be a big one next Friday with the CFL CFL on CTV. The CFL on CTV is copyright and is strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or rebroadcast in whole or in part without the express written consent of the CTV television network is strictly prohibited. And now on behalf of the entire crew who have truly enjoyed working in this magnificent stadium, and I speak of BC Police Play Stadium, we say thanks for being with us and we look forward to This is the CTV.